Okay, so hello internet. Um, I'm Udo. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I talk about whatever I want, whenever I want. Um, usually having something to do with my life, my mental health, or something that is kind of gnawing on me that I feel like I have a different perspective on. Um, I am going to talk about Michelle Fawn. Um, what she's been doing with Joe Dispenza, who is Joe Dispenza. And in general, I just have a bone to pick with law of attraction type of stuff. First and foremost, I actually have to remind people who Michelle Fawn is because she has she has been out of the game for so long that people just don't remember her. I get really worried about beauty YouTuber Michelle Phan. Michelle Phan is considered to be the first beauty YouTuber ever, and she's actually considered to be the first influencer ever by many as well. She started her YouTube channel in 2006 after her blog readers actually requested that she do like video style tutorials. She really created the blueprint of what it means to be a beauty YouTuber and a beauty influencer. She's been such a trailblazer in the industry. For example, in 2010, Michelle became Lancome's first ever official video makeup artist and she was also the first Vietnamese American ambassador that the brand ever had. She co-founded Ipsy, like Ipsy Ipsy, and she later founded her own makeup brand called M Cosmetics which she is still at the helm of today. Fans will remember that a few years ago, basically at the height of her success, Michelle essentially abandoned her YouTube channel. While on her break, she came back with a video called Why I Left, where she essentially detailed the pressure that she felt as a public figure and how she felt like she just did not connect with herself anymore. She didn't know herself anymore and the pressure of fame and making more and more money so she could continue to support her family and make her dreams come true just became all too much. Understandably, fans were very concerned for Michelle and she also released this video kind of like in the middle of all the Dramageddon's that were happening a few years ago. And so people were really feeling like this is what the beauty community needed at the time. Like they needed Michelle Fawn back. They really needed this kind of authenticity. She was speaking so candidly about how fame had changed her. Michelle continued to be on hiatus for a couple years. And then in 2019, she started posting regularly again. But the first big red flag was that in 2020, Michelle posted this Instagram story amid the pandemic, Claiming that essential oils could help cure COVID-19. But it was a weird time for influencers, so I think a lot of people just kind of brushed it under the rug, you know? There was a lot of mixed messaging we were hearing from influencers at the time, and it just kind of got swept under. And then Michelle started focusing a lot of her content around cryptocurrency and investing in Bitcoin, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just like not what her followers come to her channel for. And that brings us to last week when Michelle posted these Instagram stories, raising concerns that she was possibly on the brink of joining a cult. She wrote about how she was doing this meditation retreat led by this disgraced chiropractor. She said she was getting four hours of sleep, waking up at 3 a.m. to meditate for five hours, wasn't allowed to go to the bathroom during that time. And then she posted this, that she healed a man in a wheelchair. No, we're gonna need to do a part two. Uh, she was like the first, the first beauty guru on YouTube. She's still around. Let's see. What happened to? The internet is starting to get really worried about beauty YouTuber Michelle Phan. Michelle Phan is considered to be the first beauty YouTuber ever, and she's actually considered to be the first influencer ever by many as well. She started her channel understandably family about how fame had changed her. The reason why I'm, I'm saying I'm not surprised that like the things people are saying about her are the are the same things that people have always said about her. She's just like Michelle Phan truly is who she is. I know I had a per I personally was really I started getting really annoyed because uh she did a like a skincare video and she claimed that she wasn't using a filter and then we were able to see you were using a filter. I was accused of using skin filters. So in this video, you might not be able to tell, but for those who have a really good eye, it's obvious I'm using a beauty cam. The beauty cams are really popular. I personally love beauty cams because whenever I'm taking pictures or filming with my phone, I can't explain the science behind it, but the phone lens, it distorts my face. So I know my face really well. And whenever I'm using my camera phone and I have the selfie mode on, 
I don't look like myself. I, I look warped like a fishbowl. I think it's very natural to have insecurities. And then she kind of would go back and forth. She would say she didn't know the filter was on. And then she would say, well, all of these apps have filters on all the time. She, she says she's accused of using a skin filter, like accused. Like usually when you say someone's accusing something of you, you intend to prove how that accusation is false, but she proves that the accusation is correct. And I don't remember what video it was, but she tried to convince us that there was no filter and that she didn't know and she couldn't tell. But then at the same time, she, she does know and she can tell. And we, also, Michelle Fun is really into technology and really into beauty. And she is very much into Asian beauty and Asian beauty technology. She 100% absolutely knows. She knew there was a filter on. Um, but in the advertisement, she said, this is her skin, no filter. That... This kind of dupli Michelle has a history of being able to be, is it called duplicity? Where, where you're trying to present something one way and then when you kind of found out that you're not kind of telling the whole truth, you kind of try to spin it in a way. The first time she did it was when she started her uh, now sold by some other company, but she started a company called Iku, I-Q-Q-U. You can actually still go to the website. And um, so it was really cool because we're like, wow, you're like, you're just this YouTuber. You're just this young girl YouTuber. And now you have a skincare line. Um, and she kept saying that it was FDA approved and and then people found out it's not FDA approved. And then she would say, well, it's Asian FDA approved, which that's not, a th that's not a thing. Like the Asian version of the FDA, like each country has their own like regulatory body. So what was that? And in order to just kind of make all the backlash go away, she sold the company. I remember back when she had a Xanga, I don't know if anybody, remember Zanga is kind of like it was like a life journal except not from Russia <laughs> I guess I I don't even know if you guys will remember what life journal is either but it was like an online diary and um she would post it there was some other quote there was like some Christian quote and hey like maybe maybe it wasn't a cult but it just the way she talked about it, it seemed kind of like, kind of weird. Um, this Christian purity thing that she was a part of. And um, she, on her, on her blog, she would always talk about how she can see angels and things like that. So like this mix of being duplicitous, like, I don't even know how to describe it because if you see her or you listen to her, you she she's really easy to trust. Like she just seems like such a sweet and calm person. But if you've been following her as long as I have, you know that there's this side of being kind of duplicitous plus also this side of like being really into woo-woo spiritual stuff. <laughs> that she has and then even up to recent day I mean I know people like it's kind of annoying to like nitpick at somebody's past um like you know stuff from a decade ago but even recently the thing with the filter um she promotes nfts which I mean on face value talking about cryptocurrency and NFTs, there's nothing wrong with that. But specifically when it comes to NFTs, it just seems like, hey, you kind of know, like I know you know that your contemporaries are notorious for scamming their followers using NFTs. 
I don't know. I don't know how I feel that you are promoting NFTs without some kind of qualifying language. <laughs> I know that she, there's somebody called Princess May who has or had a cult. I don't know much about that one. Colette Pervet and Princess May decided to enter a poly relationship with the former being the partner of Princess May. They made a now deleted Q&A video about it where they basically said that the reason why their relationship is so great is because if the other is busy or unavailable, they can just get it from another partner. Poly community, by the way, has generally commented that their relationship has a lot of red flags. They've painted it like their relationship in Colette's dominatrix class, we will get to that later, are all about empowering women, but both things as they seem are being funded by a white man who is 55, called P in Colette's blog, is rumored to have a thing for Asian women. The reason why people refer to this as the Princess May and Colette Pervet cult is because in Colette's blog she talked about everything. About her relationship with May, how she really likes P, how May also started really wanting P, how P wants to recruit more Asian women into their relationship. People can assume that this is done through Colette's class that is called Mistress Class, which to add to the context of the story, Michelle Fan did in fact promote it online on her social media accounts. But let's continue. With but now, the the one that's made headlines, at least in YouTube drama T world, is um, this Dr. Joe Dispenza event that Michelle went to. Do you know him? Broke his back. Was told he would never walk again. Healed his own back with the power of the mind. Here's the story. In 1986, Joe Dispenza was in a triathlon. During the biking portion of the triathlon, he was instructed to cross the road. He didn't make it. As he attempted to cross the street, he was hit by a fucking red Bronco. They told him he would probably never walk again. He had compression fractures in six vertebrae. He had two options, a full body cast for six to 12 months or a Harrington rod procedure where they shave the back of your vertebrae off and insert metal rods in hopes of decompressing the spinal column. But he would still probably never walk. He said, nope, I'm going home. It took him six weeks to harness the power of his mind. He realized there is an infinite intelligence that lies within all of us. He was going to harness that power. Within 10 and a half weeks, he was back on his feet. He knew the power that made the body can heal the body. Your body does not differentiate between thought and reality. Now he teaches- Interesting claims that she healed a man about wheelchair bound with her mind, a sleep deprivation, it's a classic cult tactic. Um, they're meditating for five hours a day, which, hey, if you want to do that, kudos to you. But it, in combination with all the other stuff, like um, thinking that you're healing other people with your mind and you're not sleeping and you're being love bombed. She talks about how she's never felt this amount of love in her life. Love bombing is another cult tactic. All of this together is... It's weird. Um, people who were working at the event um, as hotel staff felt it was weird. They saw Dr. Joe Dispenza spending time with only certain type of event goers who looked a certain way, of a certain age, of a certain gender. If you catch my drift, um, they just felt it was weird. And it probably was effing weird. Apparently, they couldn't get up to go to the bathroom. These kind of weird things. Now, mind you, I am... Mm, I am the kind of person who, as much as I'm able to criticize this kind of stuff, sometimes I enjoy it myself. Sometimes I will sign up to go to some kind of seminar. The, the thing about Michelle, you remember the, this, this woo-woo mixed with this duplicity aspect of her. She's the kind of person who will go to something like this and if you don't agree with it, you don't like it, or you feel like, I don't think this works for me, she's the kind of person who will tell you that you're just not thinking positively enough. <laughs> who is it and why were you blocked? 
I'll start. So Michelle is the meanest influencer I have ever had the pleasure of talking to and is the prime example of toxic positivity. And I was really disappointed when this happened because she had been my idol since I was a kid. Like she literally taught me how to do makeup with her tutorials. So it started with this picture right here. Michelle shared on her story of Promise recreating Xavier Ward. And then black women were DMing her that this was cultural appropriation, it was racist because it was logs and they felt really uncomfortable. And Michelle just proceeded to post on her story uh, gaslighting them and a lot of anti-black comments along with a lot of toxic positivity belittling the, their feelings. So I respectfully commented under one of her posts that I was no longer going to support her content due to this and she responded and was incredibly nasty. Her followers came after me and basically said she couldn't be anti-black because her family are immigrants and her mom- if you don't know Dr. Joe Dispenza, his work is great for these. I call them to like what that girl says in the TikTok, toxic positivity. Maybe that's what it is. I, I actually enjoy the stuff. I enjoy self-help. I enjoy tapping into different modalities of spirituality. But I am... It's super duper uber against toxic positivity and Dr. Joe Dispenza is the kind of person who really lends himself to that. Um, if you don't know who he is, here's a brief thing. Dr. Joe Dispenza, he's not an actual physician or a PhD. He's, uh, he's um, a chiropractor. They're trying to take the woo woo stuff and they're trying to make it appear as if it's wholly scientific. Like Dr. Joe Dispenza, there, there are people who refer to Dr. Joe Dispenza, a chiropractor, they're referring to him as a quantum physicist. Thoughts are the electrical charge in the quantum field and feelings produce a magnetic charge in the quantum field. Yeah. And how you think and how you feel broadcasts electromagnetic energy that influences every single atom in your life. The thought sends the signal out and the feeling draws the experience back to you. Yeah. So then if the person is living in anger, impatience, resentment, frustration, and they're holding the intention of their future, that's mind and body in opposition. There's, 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 not a, there's no vibrational match between anything and their future because they're saying, why hasn't it happened? Yeah. And they're waiting for their healing to begin so that they feel gratitude. Mm -hmm. They're waiting for their success to feel abundance or empowerment. They're waiting uh, for their new relationship to feel love. Well, that's the old model of reality of cause and effect, Newtonian physics. So, um, he, what he uses, particularly in, he, particularly in his books, is he'll um, take, um, you know, scientific evidence of how our mind affects our body. I mean, it is true. Um, it is true that how you feel over time, your stress levels over time, how you cope, it, it is true that the way your mind works can influence your physical body, can influence hormone production and a little bit of evidence of epigenetic stuff. And in psychology, there are a lot of psychological models that would agree with him about you know, how your feeling can carry over into certain things and affect certain things. He's taking things that we have shown to be true um, in the fields of neuroscience and in the fields of biology and neuroscience and psychology and just kind of adds a nice little dose of new ageism to it. And sometimes they just completely misrepresent the actual science. So when electrons are fired through two slits onto a wall, they create what's called an interference pattern, similar to waves rather than particles. Scientists were confused by this and thought that maybe the electrons could be interfering with each other, like basically hitting each other, bouncing off each other, causing the wave-like pattern to appear on the wall. But when they fired the electrons one at a time, it created the same interference pattern, which led them to determine that each individual electron is interfering with itself, 
and can be considered to go through both slits. Physicists currently don't have a definite explanation for this, though there are multiple different hypotheses and interpretations of how that makes sense, how that's possible. But because they wanted to figure out what was actually like happening, they decided to use a machine, which is often referred to as the observer, to detect which slit each electron actually goes through. When the electrons were being observed, the wave function collapsed, which means that the electrons no longer produced a pattern like a wave, but they produced a pattern like a particle. So they acted differently when they were being observed. Folks like Chopra and that story right there, they take that information and they claim that consciousness or observing or thinking about something has an effect on it, essentially. For example, in another of his articles posted on the Huffington Post contributor platform titled The Illusion of Past, Present, and Future, Chopra says, Quantum physics tells us that objects exist in a suspended physical state until observed, when they collapse to just one outcome. We don't know what happens until we investigate, and our investigation influences that reality. The issue here is that the machine that is observing the electrons, in order for it to observe a subatomic particle like an electron, what it does is it emits photons at the electrons, which scatters them and causes the wave function collapse. There is not a human observer just looking at the electrons and then they change state because, oh, they just feel so embarrassed that somebody's watching them. Uh, he actually wants you to meditate for five hours a day, but he knows it's not realistic. So he has like meditation CDs for 20 minutes a day or whatever. Um, but more than likely, what you'll experience is something similar to what me and a lot of other people experience. I'm gonna tell you a true story about something that happened to me. A few years ago, I would listen to Joe Dispenza. I listened to his talks on YouTube. I downloaded all his audiobook. I remember driving around the Bay Area, I would drive up the hill and park my car at sunset and watch the sun over the beautiful ooh, hills. And I would listen to Joe Dispenza and I would try and get myself into this state into this field where things were going to change for me and i would do the meditations daily a half hour or an hour a day i would listen to it in the morning before i went to bed and try and get myself into that state because i believed as i was told that thoughts become things in that way and that i needed to imagine and go to that place of my future self in order to get to that future place and guess what happened nothing i was exactly that lady like literally i me and that lady we could switch places i have the exact same kind of story um and because i was so into this law of attraction stuff i really started to dig deeper and i started learning about the origins of this um you know when i said that these people like joe Dispenza, like to sprinkle new age into it what is new age? If you want to know more, I highly recommend her TikTok. Um, it's called Classic Steffi. Because everything that she's saying is right. This new age stuff, Law of Attraction, Manifestation, The, the Secrets, Abraham Hicks, all of this stuff is New Age. And this actually originates from a form of Christianity. Um, I don't know the exact dates, but I just know in the 1800s, there was this movement, these Christians who felt like, like the goal is to be like Jesus Christ, which you know, like if you're a Christian, that sounds about right. You want to be like Jesus. What would Jesus do and all that? But they took an aspect of Jesus that most Christians don't actually believe or maybe maybe you kind of do. I think it just depends on the person. But this idea that um, 
God is within you, right? Because Jesus Christ, in Christian doctrine, Jesus Christ is God. <laughs> um, how you want to explain that, he's a physical manifestation, or he's just a human with God in him, or he's just a prophet, or uh, I, I, I don't know, like different types of Christians kind of explain it a different way, but but everyone can agree that like if you say Jesus Christ is God, that is a phrase that like most Christians can agree on. And the New Age people say, well, that's also in us too. You're a God and I'm a God. We have the same powers as Jesus Christ. Like, you know, Jesus Christ performed miracles. Turn water into wine. Everybody knows that story. So these New Age people say we too can perform miracles. Um, there's this book called A Course in Miracles. Um, very much teaches very much this. Very much um, miracles. And specifically with New Age back then, it was focused on healing the body. Um, if you're sick, don't take medicine. Use your thoughts because your thought, the, like, you know how, like in Genesis, I think it says something like God spoke, he said something and it made the world be created or something like that. These type of ideas, you know, what you speak becomes reality. Your thoughts are actually real. Th this kind of thing. They kind of, they kind of, that is what they use to kind of teach their doctrine about, you know, you can heal yourself. You can heal ailments. You don't need to go see any doctors or take any medicine. Um, as time went on, different branches of this started happening, right? Um, and it became commercialized. So people started applying it to, um, to success. And I'm sure if you're aware of Christianity, then you're definitely aware of prosperity gospel. Prosperity gospel is this idea in Christianity. It's not, it is not a core, it's not a core Christian belief. Um, it, it's the kind of thing that, you know, to, pick two Christians from a crowd and you won't know if that Christian believes in prosperity gospel or not. But it's heavily promoted because it's so easy to capitalize off of. It's this idea that if you are a good Christian, um, that goodness will physically manifest in your, in your life. Uh, they say, you know what? Actually, a lot of Christians do believe this. They'll say you can see the fruits. You can judge a man by his fruits, right? So, um, so theoretically, if you're very wealthy, that is very great fruits. You must be a great Christian. And I, I mean, obviously, we know there are so many people who are very, very wealthy and very successful and world renowned. And they were not good people. They were not Christian or like not doing Christian like things at all. Or they got their money in ways that like definitely go against like even the basic 10 commandments that all Christians can agree. Like these 10 commandments we, we try to follow. Um, if you've ever seen like I don't know, like these commercials. Something happens at a level where people step into faith and give a thousand dollars that don't happen at other levels. You're going to have a breakthrough through this two hundred and seventy three dollar seed. All you've got is a thousand dollars. Listen, that's not enough money anyway to buy the house. You're trying to get in the apartment. You're trying to buy the house. That's not enough money anyway. You get to that phone and you put that seed in the ground and watch God work it out. The, the, the argument is, sow your money in the ground and you will reap returns multiple times over. Except, as an investment, you'd be better off burying your money in the actual ground. Because at least that way, there is a chance your dog may dig it up and give it back to you one day. 
okay, that's prosperity gospel. And so along the way, like this new age and prosperity gospel kind of came together. And that's why you see, uh, like the secret, but the book costs like 30 bucks. Um, seminar, law of attraction seminars, law of attraction coaches, like it created this whole industry and it's kind of fake. It's kind of fake. I mean, there's aspects of it that make a lot of sense and they're very useful in your day-to-day -day life. But for it, for someone to try to say this is how reality works for everyone and everything and every iteration of existence, I mean, I guess that's why they call it faith. <laughs> But um, what I don't get is how are you going to kind of believe that, but try to bring in like actual science and stuff. It is super easy for people who are really into this kind of stuff to um, to get kind of toxic positivity-ish. Um, there's kind of like a pipeline, like, Low key, yeah, it's like a pipeline. Like, have you ever, like, like, you ever heard of people who are like, no, don't take medicine, only do essential oils, which Michelle found is one of them. She, I don't know how many months ago she was posting about just use essential oils. It kind of leaned that way because that's how this new age stuff got started. This new age stuff got started because these people didn't want to use traditional medication or healthcare. They just really thought they can just use the power of their mind to heal themselves. So that kind of doctrine, of course, follow suit, especially something like Joe Dispenza, where his whole career is based off of this idea that his, his pupils are curing their cancer and things like that. It's the wild, exaggerated claims that really get me. All of this to say, I'm not surprised that Michelle Fine uh, found herself really loving this Joe Dispenza thing. Um, she has been into this kind of stuff for years and that's just who she is. And if you catch her in a bad mood, uh, she will toxic positivity you, <laughs> you know, she'll just say, you're not thinking positive enough. That's why your life sucked. <sighs> so anyway, that's kind of my thoughts on Michelle Fan and how she's been talked about lately and it really is just who she is. It's who she's always been, literally. So take it or leave it. <laughs> take it or leave it. Um, the thing is they really try to co-opt other cultures. I mean, like they try to, like they'll use actual science to try to make their movement seem legit. And then they will take some stuff from old religions like Buddhism or Hinduism and try to mesh it together. Um, and some people are like really convinced that they're practicing a form of Buddhism, which, you know, doesn't make sense. Isn't the whole basis of Buddhism to not be attached to stuff here? Like the whole point is to not want something. And yet, how many law of attraction videos are there where you make a list of everything that you want and you write it down 10 times. And because there's this, um, technique of detaching yourself and letting go, um, you don't get to say your Buddhism because for a split second, you tell yourself that you don't care about the thing that you just spent 30 minutes visualizing about how much you want that thing. It is so easy to just get lost in this law of attraction thing. I understand that um, some really great concepts that can be really helpful for you. 
but you gotta you gotta always be based in reality like you you always gotta have some kind of home base for this kind of stuff otherwise you'll get lost in the sauce and be tweeting the kind of stuff that Michelle Font's tweeting. If you liked this video, if you thought it was informative or helpful, then please like it so that other people can see it. It'll be recommended to other people. Um, if you like my vibe, you just like my vibe, subscribe, um, because I make videos about whatever I want, whenever I want. I appreciate you. Thanks for tuning in. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. And if nothing else, leave a paw print emoji in the comments so that we know that you exist and that you're here. Um, also, random, if you love the show Better Call Saul or Breaking Bad, you need to subscribe to my new channel called UD Reviews. Um, Pretty much all we're going to talk about is breaking is Better Call Saul for a while in Breaking Bad. Um, but if you're into that, subscribe. All right. Much love. Much luck. Peace out.